So, the next report called Lightness. Beautiful, like a poem, Lightness. Speaker Francesca Gonzalez Pulido. He is partner, executive vice president Murphy Young, United States. Francesca Gonzalez Pulida holds a degree in architecture from Monterey Tech and a master's degree from Harvard University. You may begin. Hello, everybody. Um, I, um, I think the expectation of uh, talking about tall buildings and while well, hearing about tall buildings is there, but I, I actually decided to, to, to talk about urban habitat, I guess. <laughs> and, um, and, and the reason being because in a lot of the work that we do, competitions or real buildings, um, we're always trying to push some boundaries and, and, and it's really not a question of height. It's what makes a building better, so. Let's begin. Um, in the last in the last 10, 15 years, we've been exploring transparency as as a means to uh, dematerialize our buildings and blur the boundaries between the outside and the inside space. And glass has become our great ally. And and but transparency has also this other component, which we think is very interesting, which has to do with weight and. Um, so uh, the weight of things has become very significant in our work, uh, whether it's material or immaterial. It's been a critical parameter in our design. Lightness, as we call it, is, is as much a question of matter or is a question of meaning. And uh, we like to connect it with the, the physical and the metaphysical properties of the buildings that, that we design is, is, is through lightness where I believe that I foresee the next technological opening. This is the roof of Sony Center in Berlin. Before I came to Murphy Yen, I was working on my own and I was kind of obsessed with the idea of building uh, weightless architecture and somehow using components and recycling things. I, I started this, this kind of journey in 1991 and, um, and I was in Mexico and it was, uh, there's not a lot of, there was not a lot of um, rich clients there to work with, at least for a, a 21 year old architect. So I managed to build this little thing which was a 75 square meter structure and, and, and the idea was to build it in two weeks. Uh, we had $4,000, that was the budget, and, and the idea was to use one column, one beam, nine glass panels, a couple of uh, cable trusses. And uh, it was a very interesting exercise because me and my client, somehow we felt that we were pushing some boundaries. The picture is terrible because I, I guess I didn't even have a camera back then, and so I had to borrow something. And I had to scan this image, but this thing is not working. How do I go to the next one? Okay. Uh, something that frustrates me tremendously about the way we build buildings is that we go through this phenomenally archaic, wet methodology of putting things together. At the same time, we have cars that are using composite materials that uh, clothes, and, and sales that are using extreme textiles and, um, and spacecraft containing aerogels. So I, I, I think uh, somehow it's, it's been a real inspiration, I guess is the only word that I can find right now, where from, from that industry we're trying to, to, to cross fertilize what we do, our work, and, and try to develop buildings under the same principles. Um, Lightness, I think, uh, in its broader sense, seems to be playing an important role in this transformation. Our building industry is responsible for 60% of consumption 
of material resources, 60% of mass waste, 35% of energy consumption, and 35% of emissions. The point is that less material, less components, less connections, less weight, less resistance, less distance, less waste, and less embodied energy, with by which, by the way, is 15% of the total energy in its life cycle, uh, should make sense. Right. So we're trying to build facades. This is a, uh, we're doing some explorations on buildings where we can uh, uh, kind of create a system of panels that uh, can, people can even easily replace in their buildings. Uh, we've, we're, we've been thinking about what if we can lease a facade that you can go to a place like a Home Depot type of place and, and buy the panels that you need and, and, and create some identity right to, to, to your space. And of course, this cannot be applied to every building, but I guess it's a start. Obviously, we have explored the idea of lightweight concepts in pavilion-type structures. Uh, this is a concert hall in Bonn, in, in Germany. But the question is if, if there's really room for the super tall in, in lightweight. As we know, aerodynamic uh, it's, it's a critical parameter in developing tall buildings as it relates to the plant shape, the floor plate, and the things that you all know. But beyond the boundaries of its phys physical properties, there is the understated reduction of its embodied energy, which we should consider in respect to durability of materials, uh, the separation of materials, local source materials, recycled materials, standard sizes, and manufactured materials using renewable sources. Even we've been looking, I, 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 a great friend of, of us, and, and we've been working with, uh, with him for a long time in a lot of these things, Werner Sovek. Um, we've been even working with him in the idea of incorporating chip technology into materials. So one day in the future, when you demount the building or demolish the building, you have this piece of information that tells you what were the components of this thing, who built it, when was it built, and so on and so forth. Um, the development that has taken place in our office in the last 15 years mirrors somehow the changes that have taken place in our understanding of planning and design. The symbiotic collaboration with, with Werner Sobek and Matthias Schuller on one side, special structures on the other side, energy, uh, has given us the opportunity really to take this one step further. And we started, for example, in the case with Werner, working on, on, on special structures, and then we moved into uh, you know, whole building structures. This is the airport, the, the, the new airport in Bangkok. This is a, a picture of the construction, which actually I like better than the finished building. But uh, at the end, we're working with, 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 with them in the beginning of the process in a very integrated manner. Of course, you know, we move from, from developing structures and facades to, to the green realm. Werner has founded uh, WSI Green Technologies and this is a prototype for a building 850 meters tall in Ras al Khaimah, which uh, integrates a lot of the things that I'm describing, where the structure, that, that column in the center of the building is not only structural, but it becomes a chimney that exhausts, uh, you know, the, the heated air, and, and, and there's, there's a, a track facade system that as, as the sun moves, the, 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 the building has some shades that actually rotate with the sun and so on and so forth. So um, Murphy Yan is, is been very interested in, in sustainability uh, for, for many years. I mean, I, I guess everybody, you know, is, is doing something somehow we felt that we're kind of pioneering this field since from Sony Center to the Deutsche Post. This is perhaps one of the, it's a modest building in its size, but again, I, I don't think size really matters. It's a question of how well the building is put together. This building is, is one of the most um, sophisticated buildings that we've done so far. Um, uh, it's, this is again, uh, Bangkok Airport. And, and most recently, this is a project that I just finished in Las Vegas. It's uh, a lot of architects, I guess KPF is in the room today. We were working, collaborating KPF and Norman Foster, Cesar Pelli, Vignoli. And we did this, this uh, leaning towers. They lean 30 feet away from each other. It's a concrete structure with a very interesting facade concept 
considering the harsh conditions. And as well, we're, we're doing this building in, in, um, in Wangshu, here in, in the area in China, which with a much more modest approach to, to the sustainable situation that had nothing to do with us, but with the, 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 the status of the market and the culture, uh, I think we're pushing some boundaries as well. Um, when we did uh, this building, uh, it was actually very interesting because, of course, you know, China as, as the world's largest market right now and, and, and the way they consume energy, you know, they use 45% of their energy to manufacture materials, to transport materials, to cool and heat buildings and whatever. I mean, they, uh, there's got to be, you think at least, you know, a, a certain preoccupation to be responsible towards sustainability and, and we were lucky enough to get a client who was really ready to push it with us. It's a 300 meter tall tower in, in the heart of Wangshu. It's, it's across from Adrian's building, the, that uh, Pearl River Tower. Um, the, 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 when we got the, the, the project, uh, you know, we tried to really, outside of the lead agenda, we really tried to control the aspects of the, of the design that, that, I'm sorry, we tried to really focus on the aspects of the design that we can control. Uh, the client was really hot on the lead thing, and we said, look, I mean, having bicycle parking and some waters that don't need, don't, some plants that don't need water, this is something that doesn't really interest us, okay? We, we, we're going to work on the facade, we're going to work on the systems and try to come up with something that makes sense. So we, we develop a, a high-performance triple glaze facade that has a frit that... Um, that uh, shades the building, uh, is, is very transparent, of course, because the lease plans in China are, are very deep. It's difficult to do what you do in German buildings, to, to heat and cool in the perimeter here. We're using traditional HVAC systems. But uh, it, was, it was actually um, a, a, a good experience in trying to, is this thing working or not anymore? Around that time, uh, we got engaged into a very interesting competition. It was, it was, oh my God, it was a building in uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi, and uh, it was the corporate headquarters of Mazar, and and uh, we didn't win. We came in second place, but we learned a lot from this, and and we push a lot of a lot of fronts. We develop what we call the, the energy shield, which is nothing but this kind of big roof that basically collects, generates, and saves uh, energy. It had operable roofs, uh, foldable roofs, PV cells, all the things you know. And, but what was very interesting is because the, the client was pushing really hard to get a very sustainable project and, and what they called a triple zero building. And so we worked with Schuler and, and tried to, to come up with a scheme to really reduce you know, energy consumption. and, and and of course, you never know if this is true until the building is built, but that was, that was what we came up with, 75% reduction, which was due of, you know, in, in part of that second screen on the facade that is shading passively and actively is collecting some energy. And of course, you know, this, this kind of at night when, when, the, when it gets cold, these roofs open, air goes through the atrium, actually even in the facade, we had this, this kind of fret, this kind of pattern on, on that east facade. That's actually also um, a, 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 PV, a PV pattern. And what we learned in this project, we've been, we used it in a, in a building in Switzerland. We had a, an operable roof. Uh, we created some temporary spaces there, big pivoting doors, uh, a huge operable roof that has a counterweight and some jacks there to for the, for the good times of the year, and, and a breathing facade, in this case, in difference to Litop, is this a shingle facade as well, but it's horizontal, and because of the lease pans that are so compact, we can actually take the air, if this works, we can, we can take the air in the perimeter, we have convectors for heating and cooling, we convert the air there, and, and that's how we condition the space, so we have exposed concrete ceilings in this building. This is a laboratory. For, this is the building, the Deutsche Post in Germany. I think this is a, a, a very good example of a building that, um, that um, how did I define this thing? Uh, the Deutsche Post is an example of the application of objective-oriented building techniques. Um, we, this, this building had high demands on, on flexibility, increased work, workplace quality, 
we introduce a lot of daylight and, and, and ventilation. The idea is that people is able to control really the, the, the you know, the, the amount of air that, that they require, that they want. Um, the, the building, as you can see, is really a kit of parts. I mean, this building was designed to be the mounted, you know, and, and you can build it in a, in a different site. So, so it's, it's all about components. The main features of the building is this double skin facade. Um, the, the, again, the, the ability of naturally ventilate the building. Um, we're, we're decentralizing the air conditioning, which is also very important because we have no, no docks in this building. And we're using the atrium as, as smoke exhaust um, for smoke, for smoke and, and, and heat exhaust. Um, the building also has, we're using thermal mass and, and, and we're using uh, um, geothermal. So all the cooling actually comes from, from geothermal. Um, something very important, and we had to convince the client to do this because they were very reluctant. You know, they, we said, look, you have to monitor the building because we're projecting that you're going to save 50% of energy, but we might be off. Yeah, I mean, and after quite a struggle, they decided that they will do it, and, and at the end, we were, we were right that we were wrong because we're always saving 35% energy. But at the end, the client is very happy, and, and we move on. This is a building in Las Vegas that I was telling you before. It's, um, it's a residential building. It was a very interesting project because, again, it's not a question of height, but it's a very harsh environment. The, the idea was to create a glass box in the desert, pretty much. And, and we found a lot of resistance from, from our clients at the beginning. They wanted to put mirror glass in the building. We said, please don't. I mean, it's like being in your apartment with sunglasses all the time. This is a residential building. You have to make it transparent. So, so okay, how are you going to do this? I mean, you're going to spend a lot of energy. So basically, we came up with this idea of, of having some, which is nothing new, but I mean, we put some exterior fins out of perforated metal. But the interesting thing is that we created, you can see this kind of random pattern. It's actually connected to the unit layout. So basically, where we need privacy, we have this ceramic frit where we need, you know, we, we can look to the outside and we don't care about privacy. We have actually clear glass. So um, the, the unit mix was so rich that we were able to create this, this, this kind of very random looking pattern, which of course the color came out of, you know, trying to contextualize with the, the desert in Las Vegas. And at the end of the building, we were able to reduce significantly the size of the shafts. You know, the building uses 30% less energy than, than, than a building of its kind. Uh, they're struggling to sell the apartments, but that has nothing to do with us, I guess. I hope at least. But it's been, it's, was, it was a good, a good experience. So um, now I'm going to get into, I think, what is interesting, <laughs> which is where, where are we going or where are we pushing things right now in Murphy Ann? And, and uh, this is a building that I designed um, recently in Chongqing, uh, here in China. And, and the idea was to do a building with, with um, uh, plastics, um, using uh, plastics and, and, and reinforcing them with, with fibers. And, uh, and again, working with Sobek, we, we discovered uh, a lot of interesting things. Um, I think I'm missing something here. Um, the, the, the project is basically a, a, an office building with kind of a museum program here and some retail and some amenities and there's an auditorium. But we discovered that by using composites, we can reduce the weight by a third, but the building will cost Mr. three Pulida, times more. Two minutes. It's okay. So, um, so anyway, uh, this is where we're heading, and, and we're trying to, to, to apply some of these things into the tall buildings that we're designing. I will show you briefly some of them. Um, the technology was not only, the idea was not only to apply to the structure of the building, also to the facades of the building. And the other aspect that interest, is very interesting for us right now is textiles. We've been exploring with the possibility of doing facade panels out of membranes. And because the U-value is, is phenomenal. I mean, 
in the best uh, insulated glass unit, you get 1.8, let's say. With If you use textiles, you can go to 0.6. So, so we did a building, this was for a competition, where, where we're using a, a, a textile. Again, it's a technology that we're developing with Werner. We have the exterior fins that we have in Vegas, some glare panels and, and some fabric panels. Culturally, it's a real challenge, of course. I mean, there's, there's a lot of um, concerns, you know, about can I punch this thing, can I break it, whatever. But I think eventually uh, we'll get there. Uh, this is an application of some membranes in buildings that we've done. This is Bangkok. And uh, I'm just going to finish by reading you something here. This is, uh, I'm going to show you briefly some of the tall buildings that we're doing right now. And I'm going to read you something just to close the session. Um, um, our personal vision of the super tall has shifted over the last years. Paradoxically, it has to do less with height and more with the evolution of this building typology. It is time to do more with less, and somehow the world of megastructures, wind catchers, sun tracking enclosures, and endless peaks seem to be disconnected from the issues that a sustainable society is demanding. We seek to build structures that do not consume fossil fuels, do not generate any emissions, and are completely recyclable. The wisdom of skyscraper development has been often questioned. The vertical strength has to match a horizontal force of equal magnitude, if not more. The question is still open. Can this building be a valid path towards urbanization? There is no doubt that we will be able to build higher. It's not a technological issue. It's a moral issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your excellent presentation. Uh, we're going to have uh, time for one question. We are still behind time. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, one thing, one of the most brave examples uh, that I'd seen with respect to your this thing was the Bangkok International Airport, uh, especially with respect to the interiors. Uh, what were the basic design principles that finally led you to an exposed concrete, exposed ceiling kind of a f uh, finish for the inside, uh, when that is actually very, very different from what is conventional wisdom for an airport? Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't quite understand the question. Yeah, uh, I was just asking about the Bangkok International Airport. Right. Uh, I was just asking what were the design principles that finally led you to the decision of an exposed ceiling inside and an exposed concrete finish when that is actually very different I, from I, conventional I see. wisdom? I see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Bangkok is a, actually a great example. I didn't get a chance to get into a lot of the sustainable features of that building, but you know, I guess, I guess it's the nature of our work. It's really about skin and bones. We really don't like decoration. We just don't believe in it, you know. And Vegas was, for example, a real struggle because the client was always telling us, what are you going to do with this wall? It's just concrete. No, no, it cannot be. It's a lobby, right? So, so I think Bangkok, you know, airports is something that I think you have certain expertise in. And, and we like because they're really machines, you know. An airport really comes from the problem of how you park the planes and how you bring the people to the planes, and that determines everything. So that building has that spirit. Uh, I, I don't think, I mean, I, I would lie to you if I tell you that that was really an intention. I think it was just the result of the way we work. Uh, you know, we like to present the materials as they are and not to cover them. You know? But one, one very interesting aspect of that building is, is um, you know, stratification. Because of the large volume of the concourse, what we did is we used a very interesting mechanical system that, that only conditions the areas where you're, where you're, that you're using because the volume is so large. So that, that actually, I know that was not the question, but just I'm using this as advertising, I guess, right? Uh, that was a very important feature you know, because we save a lot of energy. Thank you. Thank you.